How's everyone tonight? Okay, last week. So tonight, let me uh, highlight where we're at. We have one section left on the schedule, which is 14.5. So click on that one. I'm going to make it extra credit so you don't have to do it. Um, there's one question on the final that's a multiple choice on it. So it's not, it doesn't really have much business application either. So I'll skip it. If you do it, you can answer it on the final, get extra credit or no credit, it's fine. Um, there is a slide deck. I did a previous lecture. Uh, and one of the reasons I'm not doing it is because uh, it requires the, the use of limits to go through this unit. We did very limited stuff on limits. When we did this class before and had this in, we did a lot more on, on limits, but we eliminated some of those. So I didn't think it's, again, for, first of all, it's not really of importance as far as a business application. So we're just gonna make it extra credit, yes. Yeah, I'll. You won't get off no, time. it's four points, so I'll make the 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 test will be out of what's four from one hundred ninety six, so ninety six will be if you get ninety six points, that's a hundred percent. If you happen to answer that that question correctly, you could have a hundred out of ninety six get a little extra credit. Okay. As I and I do have a copy of the final that was just sent out today, so I started looking over it. It's very similar to the three exams we've taken, with the exception of uh, it does include, and I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll go through the, high, uh, the, the review that's posted. I'll highlight a few of the questions to make sure what to give you a little bit clearer. But it does have some of the things that we've done recently, the surplus, either consumer or producer. But it does provide the formula, so you don't have to memorize the formula. So they'll tell it this is the formula. They give you everything else. You should be fine with that one. There's also one question on, on average value. But again, they also give you the, the formula, which is not much. It's just really the integral with 1 over A minus B. So, but they give it to you. So you don't even have to memorize those things. Uh, so there's, that's the only stuff that isn't on any previous exam. The rest of the stuff looks very similar. I mean, it's almost like they took some of those exam questions reworked them a little as far as different functions, different numbers, uh, but the process is gonna be the same, okay? So it would be helpful. Again, you, you can do 14.5 uh, or not. It, if you do it, I'll pick it up as extra credit. If you don't do it, it doesn't count against you. Uh, so I've got the solutions for exams one, two, three. If you've got yours handed back, I've ha I don't have them with me now. I do have everyone's that didn't pick theirs up is in my drawer. Uh, if you want it back, we can, you can come to the office hours or let me know. I have to look through them, but uh, there's a solution. So there's actually copies of the exams and I work through them myself. That's how I do it for grading. So I work for the most part step by step. Um, if you, but anyway, this will give you access to the three exams that we've taken. So that's a good place to look. Try to remember which one maybe you had problems with and, and work through them. Because again, some of the questions are very similar, in fact, even in the setup. It's like they just copied over, put it in there, and changed the functions a bit. But it's, you're going to see the same, um, same format. So then. There, what I've also copied down here, now these were further up in Canvas, so exam one's review is here, exam's two study guide with video solutions is here, um, and I guess we did some, we kind of broke it into two pieces, and then exam three, review and solutions are here. So if you go in there, um, there's the review, there's some videos with solutions to each of them. Um, so those would be, Again, the same type of resources that were used for each of the exams. 
because pretty much it's with the exception of those two types of questions, the average value and the surplus, it's exams one, two, three again, all together. So let's go through uh, tonight, since there's really, there's no new concept, uh, content, is, let's see, well, let me highlight, since I've got it recorded, uh, the location and time of the final, as everyone knows, it'll be Thursday, not this Thursday, but next Thursday, May 4th, 7, 10 p.m., so we usually meet at 6, so it's a little bit later, and we have till 9 p.m. We'll be in this building, but we'll be in L174, which I think is down there. Maybe it's across the hall. I haven't, I'm not quite sure where it is, but I've, it's, L1 this is, yeah, so this is L120, so L174 is down here somewhere, so we'll figure it out. Yeah, it's close. Uh, if you come here, you'll see somebody else giving the exam. It'll probably be a 210 exam because that's it's common exams. Uh, but, you know, I've had students do that. It is the same final, but then that instructor getting it to me. But just remember, you'll see somebody else here. It's not that I got sick. It's that I'm in, I'm in 74. Okay? So that's there. And then... Uh, right above this is a review for the final exam. That is what's available in the website for Math 210. So it's been there all along. Uh, I've downloaded it as a PDF. So I'm gonna go through that version. Like, like I, my practice, I'll highlight a few problems that, hey, you should look at these. And so just sort of a minimal. The other ones will be helpful to, you know, get the overall concepts, but at least take a look at the ones that I highlight. As soon as I've got it highlighted, I will reload it up here. I think, yeah, so there's this. I'll put a, a third link to the highlighted version of the review. But there's also uh, answers in here. And what you'll find is a lot of it is similar to what we've done before. So uh, you'll see videos from the other reviews as well. So kind of take a look between the two. and. The goal is that this is kind of the start of our review period. Uh, Thursday, we'll just answer questions from the review, maybe the ones that I highlight. I, it, but it's best if you at least take some time between now and Thursday to look at it as much as you can. And then you've got from Thursday to the next Thursday, a whole week, to review and review. And remember, uh, now it's not, no exam gets dropped but the lowest exam score between one, two, and three will get replaced by how you do on the final. Okay, so if you do better on the final. So, you know, what if I don't do better? Well, no, we'll only replace it if it's better. Okay, so that's in general. What I actually do is I'll look also at the questions that pertain to exam one and kind of then see if there's been progress there and maybe make some adjustments. So if you can make progress on anything, it will, it will result in a, in a better grade, better score. Um, okay, so let's, where is, here it is. So this is the final exam review, and again, it's it's very similar to all the reviews we've been doing. Let's see. Um, so in general, the, the test will have 10 multiple choice questions. And I'll just let you know one of them is that indefinite integral one. So basically nine will count, one is a freebie. Uh, you can take a guess at it if you want or work through it. But uh, So there's those 10 and then there's seven they call them, what are they called? Oh, free response. So you have to show your work, okay? Now you can use your calculator to get to some of the answers, but the goal is that you show your work. Of, of, so if it asks you to take an integral, we wanna see you take the integral, not just use your calculator to get the numerical value and write that down. Um, I think on the last exam, most people were just fine with that, but just know that that's what we're looking for. Typically what I'll do is when I go to grade those, I look if I can see a nice clear answer that's correct and I can see sort of a pathway. I don't look too deeply at it, okay? But it, it has to, 
sort of have the flow that you are doing the right thing. Okay, so even if it's not, you know, I don't get into the details. If it's a wrong answer, then I spend more time actually, because I'll go in and see how much of it is, that is correct, so I can give some partial credit. Um, and, you know, this one I, I, I'll take me a little bit longer because we don't meet again. I don't have a chance to hand them back. Uh, you won't have a chance to see them. So, but I will do my best to get them, so it's Thursday night, do the grading Friday so they're at least published. Uh, you'll at least see the score as soon as possible. Be, I have to have grades posted by that following Monday. So if you could at least take a look, if you have questions, we could maybe set up a Zoom call, you know, if you thought, well, I, you know, we'll talk it through, okay? So we'll, we'll have a way that way. So what about limits should you know how to do? Um, nothing really with that. What I would suggest is, is something like, let's see, I have to turn on my, my highlighter. That did it. Um, I would, you know, these rational ones, x going to infinity, know how those three work. These are three actually different ones. And there's one bigger on the top than the bottom. Uh, one bigger on the bottom than the top, and one has the same. So be able to know how those have different limits. Okay, and again, going back, takes us all the way to the beginning. But that is one thing we did with limits. Um, so you look at those three and you'll be fine. Um, and we're okay, we're okay. Not much with rate of change because that just kind of led us into doing the derivative. Uh, so again, the test is 17 questions, so we, we don't test you on every single thing. There are no true-false, thank goodness. Um, so there are some on differentiating. So be able to use the product rule, quotient rule, chain rule, constant multiple, uh, and I'll be able to do something like, say, that one, uh, be able to, oh, let's see, this would be like a good uh, quotient rule one, um, there's that, and then a product rule one, actually, I think there's, yeah, product rule one, something like that, you know, two things being multiplied. Um, I know how to do those. Nothing on the tangent line, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, nothing on that. Let's see. I think there's a there is a velocity question, but I think there was a one further down. So we'll take a look. Marginal analysis. Um, let's see. The way they're going to incorporate it, what is a marginal, marginal cost, a marginal revenue? Derivative. It's a derivative. So the way they address the marginal, instead of having you find a marginal cost, they're going to give you a marginal cost, and then they want you to find the cost function. So what does that involve? Since they give you the derivative, how do you find the function it came from? You integrate. Right, so it's a backward, it's the antiderivative. So that's how it's involved. So there is there is a marginal question, um, but they're gonna do it, it's backwards, okay? And I think there's one further down, we'll take a look. Um, chain rule, um, let's see. Yeah, not, nothing too funky there, so you know, be able to take, remember, the derivative of the outside function and the derivative of the inside function times. Um, be able to take a derivative of a logarithm, maybe something like this. Um, and derivative of a exponential. And this actually, this is a good one because it's an exponential, but it's also, it's got the chain rule in it and it's also got a product rule. So this one is a really good one to work on. Uh, implicit differentiation, know how to do that. Um, 
and I'll just kind of, if you can do B, you're going to be just fine. So there is, there is one, find the implicit derivative. So both X and Y. Um, so review that. Uh, the maximum and minimum, uh, they're going to, there's one where they'll give you a graph and they'll ask you questions about the derivative. So something like this, a graph of a function is given, but then they, so this is not the graph of the derivative, right? It's the graph of the function, but they're going to ask you about the derivative. What do you know about the derivative at a, either a maximum or a minimum? What would the derivative be down here? What's that? Well, well it, it has a numerical value. No, no, so that's a function value. So this is a function, but what would be the derivative of this function at this point here, say when x is 2? What would the derivative be equal to? When you have a maximum or minimum, you have a horizontal <laughs> tangent line. What's the slope of a horizontal tangent line? Zero. zero. It's going to have a derivative of zero. Okay. So know those kind of things. Uh, know whether you know if it's increasing, it's going to have a positive slope, right? A positive. The derivative is going to be positive. If it's decreasing, the derivative will be negative. So those kind of general like things. So when you look at this graph, be able to see the different parts and sort of relate it to the slope of the tangent line because that's going to be what the derivative is. Okay, so kind of go back and review, you know, what does the derivative tell us about the function's graph? It tells us where we have maximums whenever the function is equal to zero. We call those critical points. So there's another question that we'll be asking you directly about those, but there is one that they just give you a picture of a function and then they ask you some questions of what's true about it or false. Um, and then there'll be something, let's see, this, I think something like this one here. So they'll give you a function, not just the graph, the function. They'll ask you to find critical points. What are critical points? It's where the first derivative equals zero. So you're going to find the derivative, find where it's equal to zero. Um, also maybe where it's increasing, decreasing. And then they give you a interval, so you've got endpoints. You need to find the values at the endpoints and then identify relative and absolute maximums and minimums. So know how to do that. Question six is a good example. Because it's going to have like three different places. Okay. Um, Don't have to worry about those. That's okay. Optimization. There's an optimization type problem. Um, something along this order where you, you're building a fence to make a rectangular garden. You want to maximize it or you want to minimize the cost. What do they want to do here? The, the largest area, uh, least expensive. So I would three and four are uh, good practice. So basically the same thing, but one, you're trying to maximize the area. This one, you're going to minimize the cost of a fence, right? So be able to work through those types. And you'll be just fine. Nothing with like second derivatives directly. Related rates, okay? So, yeah. Remember, related rates are as, as the radius of a balloon is increasing what's happening to the volume. You know, the volume is one rate, the, the radius is another one. So that's the related rates type problem. Uh, so take a look at that one. Um, you know, the circle is, is a little bit, but it, it'll be a three-dimensional type problem, okay? The cool part is, is on, when they need a, a formula, like you don't have to remember the formula for a sphere. It is four-thirds pi r cubed, but who, you don't need to know if they'll give it to you. Okay. But something like this, uh, in the practice they don't seem to give it to you, but on the test they'll give it, they'll give you that uh, function. 
Um, okay. No elasticity of demand. That was everybody's favorite, wasn't it? No, not really. Okay, mine neither. Okay, so, but no, no elasticity of demand. Um, some in, indefinite integrals. I would say, you know, just be able to integrate in general something like this. And remember, these are negative exponents, so uh, this one's going to be the natural log, right? When we integrate it, so it's that one that's kind of weird. This one, you're going to want to make it x to the minus seven, then add one, and go through that. Okay, so be able to take indefinite integrals. You'll be fine. Um, and then something like, uh, what's the, uh, okay, we did that. And some of these, they don't, um, they ask you maybe to set up the question. They don't ask you to solve it. So sometimes those are harder because it's, you know, which one, they, they've got the right pieces, but you've got to, which one are they doing? Um, but watch for that. I'm going to go back. Well, let's keep going and then I'll, because I, I think there's one that I missed. So substitution, remember this is the U one. Uh, it's, it's set up just like the last, test I didn't we have a substitution one of the last test or was that test two I thought it was the last one wasn't it yeah and they do it step they it's really set up the same way step by step what is u what's dx that kind you know so uh, and again I I will do the same thing if, if, you, if you don't if you find that following their step by step is you sort of do it a little differently that's fine as long as it works there and you're able to take the uh, um, the, the integral of something using, uh, and let's just go with this one. This is a little bit complex. So notice the two, 3x squared plus 1 is really the derivative of the, the function here. So if you can do one like this, choose your u, set it up, and get its derivative, or integral, sorry. Um, so there's one like that. Uh, fundamental theorem of calculus, um, and that's really just having the boundaries, the limits, and using those, um, they don't specifically mention it, but you know, be able to integrate something and then calculate it from, you know, in this case, just from one to zero. I know how to do that, so I'll pick that one. Um, Riemann sums. Um, I'm going to spoil it a little bit for you. They're going to ask you to do a left Riemann sum, but they're not going to give you the function except to say it's like f of x, okay? So let's maybe talk out how that might look. And I'll just use one of these. And again, because it's, it's asked differently than we've, we've done it before. Usually they ask, they at least give us the function and we can kind of set it up. But let me just take one of the, let me take, uh, let me take number three and set it up how they might do it. Okay, so let's, um, anyone else tired? It's been a long semester, hasn't it? It's just like, we need a break, all of us. We deserve it. We'll get it, right? How many of you doing summer school? Yeah, I got to. Otherwise, I got no paycheck, so <laughs> it's kind of like, uh, hang in there. At least I'm not taking classes. This is the first time in four years I don't have to take summer classes as well as work. So I'm happy about that. Okay, so what they do is they don't give you the function like this. They just say it's f of x. So how do we go about doing something like that? Well, they'll give us some sort of interval, so 1 to 3 with 5 five divisions, right? How do we figure out how wide each of the rectangles are? Exactly. So you take the, the, the big one minus the little one divided by five. That tells us how wide everything is. Uh, and that's two divided by five. So it's going to have a width of, that's 0.4. So that's going to be our change in x. And since we do a left-handed, we start at the 
left hand side which is 1 so the way we're going to calculate that remember is we need f of 1 plus f of 1.4 notice we're just adding this change 0.4 and plus f of 1.8 plus oh sh what happened that was weird it just erased it all on me okay we'll try that again we'll go a little faster f of 1 f of 1.4 f of 1.8 f of 2.2 .2. right I'm just adding 0.4 to each of these and the thing is you got to know when to stop after we have five of these we can stop we got one two three four so one more is going to be f of 2.6 now we don't go to two we don't go f of three because that would we use that only if we were doing a right hand which we didn't do any of those are we done no this is going to give us all the heights of the rectangles. We need to also multiply by the change in x, right? Because that's the, that's the base of every rectangle. So then we have to come, what was it, 0.4? So they're looking for something like this, OK? You'll set it up, but I don't want you getting stuck up. Well, they don't give me a formula. How can I get the Riemann sum? You don't actually have to get it. You just have to set it up like that because we can't actually calculate it because they don't give us a formula they don't give us they just give us we've got a function f of x or something like that they'll tell us the interval they'll give us this or maybe they'll give us how many divisions how, how wide the division is but this is how we would this is what they're looking for does that make sense does it seem easier than you don't actually have to calculate it this way okay but again just be prepared because um, we I don't think we've done one like that I don't remember seeing one okay so um, come back here so I'll just highlight this um, but if you watch the video you'll see just know that know how Riemann sums work but you're not actually going to calculate one with a function you're just kind of going to the general Okay, um, application for definite interval. So this is, yeah, if you, they'll give you a marginal, so marginal revenue, marginal cost, and then what you need to do is go through the steps. You need to find the actual revenue cost, revenue cost or profit function, whichever, you know, they'll give you. They'll give you a marginal cost, marginal revenue, marginal profit, integrate it, and you've got the actual function, okay? Um, So something similar to this. Let's see, there we go. Area between two curves. Uh, they've got one, and kind of like and it's again, it was like the last test as well. Uh, they'll give you two functions. You have to find where they intersect. So you know, have your graphing calculator. You can do it algebraically. And when you do it algebraically, you set these two equations equal to each other and then solve for x. Just remember that when we have an x squared, um, you can't solve for x directly. You, you use a quadratic, and usually it involves some sort of factoring. Uh, you could use your graphing calculator to find where it crosses the x-axis, something like that. But be able to find where those points are. Um, and again, you can be a little, you know, you can use your graph, you could graph it, find those points, and then kind of work backwards. And again, as long as you have the right points, the right answers, if you just kind of, you can kind of fake the work, you know, because I'm not going to look too deeply at it, uh, but try to do it. So, I mean, I, I'll, I'll look at it, but it's got to say, oh yeah, you got the right answer. You must have done something right. Um, but, and again, because some, you know, it might be a simple factoring, but it's not always, factoring is not simple for everybody. And again, it was not a big part of this class and it's not really a big part of your future, so let's not worry about it. Um, 
Let's see, we don't have to worry about those. So average value, there is one like this. Uh, again, they will, um, I don't know, I'll give you, I think something like this. They'll give you the function, um, but they'll also give you the formula for average value. So you'll see, yeah, you need to integrate it over those limits, and then you need to divide by A, I don't know, B minus A, right? So they give you the formula for average value. Okay, but be able to do something like that, again, as long as you, you have the formula. Uh, there'll be something on either consumer surplus or producer surplus, uh, but they will give you, just like they do here, they will let you know, oh, consumer surplus, this is it. Or if they ask you to do uh, producer surplus, they'll give you the function. Okay, so um, you know, maybe this one. Right, a linear function, you don't have to do that kind of stuff. But um, calculate the consumer surplus. Actually, that one's a multi-step one. Well, these are, these are actually a little bit more challenging than the ones on the test, but that's always good, because these ones you have to set it up. So calculate the producer surplus for the supply equation at the indicated unit price. So you, you, you're actually going to have to set it up here, I guess. Let's see. Producer surplus is defined as that. Oh, and then they give you the P. Okay, so this is okay. They're giving you the P. They're giving you the value for P. Bar. Um, this one on B, you kind of have to do A, but a linear function is just Y equals MX plus B. So it shouldn't be too hard to set up. $20 per each day, so 20X. Um, or something like oh twenty dollars each. You decide to drop the price. So yeah, I think this one should there. There should be a video on it. So we'll take a look at it. Maybe we'll look at it on Thursday, if you need to. Let's see what else. That's pretty much it. Producer surplus. Actually, consumer surplus. Actually, this one's maybe, let me highlight this one. And let me take this one off. Well, I can't take it off, so we'll just, we'll leave it there. And then you'll see improper integrals, which is, again, I'm making extra credit. It's not worth spending a few hours in frustration to learn on something for a four-point question that we'll just, we'll just take it off. They told me I can't change the test, so I won't change the test, but I can always change how I grade it, right? So don't make any changes. OK, no changes. I was going to delete it, but then I thought, well, I'll get in less trouble this way. So. But I'm okay. Does that make sense? So is that question multiple choice or is it pure response? It's multiple choice. Yeah. yeah. So at least, I mean, if you even just take a quick look at it, you could probably figure it out and take a good guess and get four extra credit points, you know. Wouldn't hurt. Um, let's see how many, let's count how many we have. I think we should have enough. Let's see, we got one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, 21. Yeah, that's, and then there was one up here. And then those three, again, there'll be one question like this, but know how to do all three of these. That covers, if you just do those, you'll be fine. I mean, you'll, you'll know at least. I would work a little bit more because, it, you know, you want to see them slightly differently. And I would also go back 
either to your own exam one, two, three, or the ones I got posted with the answers, and maybe whichever way you want to do. But no, feel comfortable that if you had to retake exam one, that you could do very well at it because you've got all the answers to it, right? You should review it to the point where exam one, hey, you give me another version of exam one and I could do real good. Exam two, give me another version, I could do real good. Exam three, give me a slightly different version, you know, where the numbers are changed, I'm gonna do real good. You will do real good on the final. Okay. And again, because the setups are even the same, when you look at it, you're going, wow, this looks like exactly the same question from exam three, but probably a few numbers are changed. So it is that kind. Put in the effort, you'll do well. Okay, yes sir. Yeah, I know. They're trying, it's a philosophy. They're trying to test you for problem solving and different things. The thing I think is that's great for homework, you know, through all these different varieties where we can discuss it and think it out. But an exam, sh to me, should just be indication that you did the studying and you can, for the most part, on your own work through the things. But yeah, the making it too different to try to do problem solving during the test. I mean, I've always got too much stress to do much problem solving, but I can show you what I know. Uh, and that's what I try. So when I make them up, I try to keep them very similar. Um, and I think you'll be pretty close between this and then because now we've got the copies of each of the exams, they didn't go, they're, they're similar to what they've been doing before. So it's like there's no secrets. Okay, how's that? Feel you, okay, and it's just, I'm gonna upload this one so it has, you know, focus on those, and that kind of gives you a feel also for the length of the final, because we do have two hours for it, so, it, um, and I'm not gonna cut anyone off, so if you need a little extra time, because there's nobody coming after us, right? We done, at nine, who's gonna take a final after <laughs> that time? Hope not. Um, and it's already dark out, so you know I'm not going to be any more scared going home at 9:30 than I would at nine. So I'll be fine. Uh, we're, we're okay. So, but a number you may finish up in an hour. You know, maybe you know. It's, and again, it's not a race, but um, they try to make it so you're not having to use all that time. Maybe an hour and a half. But you've got the two hours, and if we need more, you know, just finish it up. Questions. All right, so I'll upload this, and then we'll take a, uh, if you've got questions, hang out. If you wanna head out, that's fine. I wanna head out, but I get paid for this, so I'll stay. If you got questions, no penalties or anything, I'll answer all your questions, so. Uh, but then Thursday, we'll just, got questions come, and we'll, we'll get them out.